Yeah, I want to present um, on the care program, which is funded by USID. And most of the first slides are going to overlap with what my colleague Jared will be presenting. Okay, this is where uh, we are working. Uh, we are funded by USID and the Millennium Water Alliance. And we are four, we call implementing partners. Uh, we have programs in Turukana, that's by World Vision. Marsa Pidisiolo is under Food for the Hungry. CRS is in Wajia. And the care happens to be in Garissa. And we have some beads, some tentacles in Mayale, which is part of uh, Marsa Pid. Just an overview is that the USID funded the Millennium Water Alliance to implement the water sanitation and the hygiene. And this program actually has incorporated the disaster risk reduction. As you know, because of the climate change challenges, disasters are happening. And again, it's either a very chronic persistent drought or maybe flooding. Therefore, we are using this wash as a platform also to incorporate DRR. The implementing partners of this award, we have Care Kenya, the CRS Kenya, Food for the Hungry, and World Vision. And our focus is actually in the arid and semi-arid lands of northern Kenya. The program we target uh, holistically, we shall reach maybe 160,000 people or more beneficiaries. The program is called Kenya Arid Lands DRR Wash, and it will run until December next year. Uh, it aims to improve access to water, sanitation, and hygiene, and at the same time, it will also build the community resilience to drought and flash floods. Those are the key disasters. They are the main disasters, actually, which uh, are prone in the, arid, uh, in the northern Kenya. Our mandate as implementing partners is to address wash infrastructure. We build the capacities for a sustainable program. That's, what, that's the mandate for implementing partners. On the other hand, the supporting partners are there to provide technical assistance so as to integrate and develop innovations to strengthen what we shall be doing in the field. The Archivo will be supporting us to do the digital monitoring, reporting, documentation, and the dissemination of results. Millennium Water Alliance has uh, partnered with Archivo in order for all our program uh, implementing partners to access fully electronic cloud-based platform called field level operations watch. And this is what we have used and it's the experience we want to share here. Care adopted the flow, which is a mobile phone and online service that transforms field monitoring using Android smartphones to undertake the baseline which took place between April and May. The survey was undertaken in 20 specific locations. Uh, some of them were scattered in like, uh, Garissa, Lagidera, Moyare, and uh, Wajia North. Therefore, you can see care programs is actually scattered. For those who also understand those locations, then naturally, for example, coming from Garissa to, to Moyale, you have to come to Nairobi, take a flight, to go and see another site. Unlike others who maybe you take a vehicle, 20 kilometers away, you are in another site. But for care, you can see how scattered we are. And that's why we need that digital, uh, the really serious, uh, reporting because they can use, I mean, they can help us, especially me, I'm based in Garissa, but I want to know what's happening on the other side. Okay, of the 142, 391 households in those locations which care is targeting, 206, we interviewed, that was our sample size, 206, and we used the 10 enumerators, they did this work for eight days. Before the enumerators went to the field, before we dispatched them, they were trained on the product, on the use of phones, and then they were dispatched. The data once it was collected was delayed directly to Archivo dashboard, and then, and this was done immediately. You, you take the data, you reroute to the dashboard. But in case there is no network, when you research into the network, you can still delay the same to the dashboard. That was the procedure. Maybe we can now look at what were the advantages. Okay, data is laid to dashboard soon after collected. It is therefore minimizes on the time taken to start cleaning of data. That's one advantage we saw. Another one is flow, the ARC flow ensure 
the validity of data right at source because one takes the GPS, there is a camera, you take the photo of the respondent, and then you don't have a, a questionnaire the way we have been doing it conventionally, it is just in the phone. Therefore, when it says skip, the phone skips itself to that number. Therefore, it, somehow it minimizes any errors. Because I am sure with the paperwork, sometimes you are told to skip, but if you don't skip, then you ask the next question, which is very irrelevant. Therefore, for this one, it's automated such that it guides you as you go through. Another advantage is that the risk of losing data, data due to torn papers because of maybe they have been rained on, poor storage before they are submitted, and the information eligibility is minimized. What we are saying here, most of the, the, the paperwork, some of us who have been in the development world for a long time, we know questionnaires sometimes can be rained on, like the, the system we are working in is, was during the rains. Therefore, unless you have a very good storage facility, sometimes you might end up not having the right information. And maybe even some of this information is fading because of it has been exposed to water or wherever. Uh, another advantage is that the information sharing is integrated right at the onset, in which case the Millennium Water Alliance uh, other partners and the data managers are accessible to the dashboard database and they can monitor the progress. What I'm saying, as we were working wherever, the managers, the archivists, they will see, the, they will see our questionnaire streaming in on a daily basis. Therefore, they will monitor this the progress of care. Therefore, you can see how convenient it is. Rather than waiting for them, care against the, the, the questionnaires from wherever, put them together and route them to the central place. That one, we saw this is a very good advantage. Uh, sometimes, flow minimizes wrong entries or double entries I seen with the paperwork. Now, what used to happen if I do a questionnaire, I'm the, the enumerator, then my friend here will do the cleaning. Now, if I said 18, it's like you to write 20. Therefore, there's no counter-checking. Therefore, some of them you might find the original information is missing because there's a second person. There's a second person who's doing it, a second, uh, a second party. Therefore, this, this one minimizes because the original data is rerouted to the dashboard the way it was from the, from the numerator. In terms of safeguarding data, data at the field against the hazards like grains, as experienced during the baseline period, it only requires the safety of the phones and the charging devices. What I'm saying here, if it's raining on you, what you are worried of more is uh, your phone, okay? Because you don't have a big bundle of papers you are worried about. Therefore, once the phone is safeguarded, maybe somewhere, then you know that data is equally safe. The system is self backing because once you, you send it to the, to the phone and it route it straight to the dashboard, it means that information, even if you lost the phone, somehow it has already backed itself somewhere in the, in the database. Uh, the smartphones we were using, I had somebody saying that power was a big issue wherever they were working. But for our case, we were given other gadgets which are meant to use the solar energy for charging. Therefore, we didn't have any issue with the power supply. And another advantage is that the smartphone is a phone. In the event you want wants to communicate, you still can turn it into a communication gadget. That's another double advantage. Okay, these are the challenges. The system is network reliant and can be challenging in certain rural areas where the infrastructure may not exist. Like in, uh, sometimes back, some people were seen photoed on, on top of the trees looking for the network. Therefore, if you have to work in such an environment, where the network is not existing, it might be a challenge. At the onset of the survey, another challenge was one mandatory question was erroneously omitted. When they were uploading the tool into the system, a question missed out. I don't know for what reason. Now, this was discovered when they had done quite a substantial number of households, which means when we raised a red flag, they said, stop, let us <laughs> re-upload the tool afresh. You know we have wasted that day. And if you are talking about the numerators who are the casual employees, already you have to pay for them that day, not because it was their mistake, but the mistake was because there was an omission somewhere. That was maybe another challenge we saw. 
Uh, the survey in active flow was preset and they could not be uh, altered while in the field. What we said here, if you come to a situation, somebody wants to give you more information. Maybe there's something you need to, there's some, some fine, fine details you need to, you, don't, you cannot avoid. Therefore, it doesn't have that space where you can do a bit extra narratives. The smartphones and the accompanying gadgets may be risky. Those of, those of us who have seen the charger, it resembles a grenade. Therefore, they become so hard. In Garissa, where grenades are the end of the day, that you are regarding something which is, if you are seen by a chief or a police, first you have to be arrested because they have to, to go and find out whether it's, it's true, it's a charger or what is it. And even the smartphone itself is expensive. And you know, those are the things people are looking for. When I brought ours down to Nairobi and I met Francis, we met in the streets. And when I gave him, he said, I wish no one has seen me carry these phones. Because those are expensive gadgets. You can be a target. That's what we, we said here. Uh, if you listen, slant, a tool to be administered under the flow, software need to be verified. And the next idea is confirmed since any alterations in the field is not practical. We are learning from when we missed out the, 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 question, the, the question, it was to be uploaded from another area. Therefore, it took a lot of time. Therefore, it's good you understand the tool, you agree before you go to the field. Uh, it is a digitalized online software, and the data collectors must have basic understanding using the smartphones. I was looking, suppose we were, use, we were using enumerators who are analog. I'm sure they will not manage this. Therefore, somehow it requires people who basically understand how to manage the internet. The good thing that most of the, the youth we see around us, they are very much familiar with the internet. They are either in Facebook, they are in Twittering, therefore we didn't have a, a problem with that. Uh, being internet reliant also software, the flow use requires flexibility in the meeting timelines or eventually such, a, such that in the event of network failure, more time space is available. The, the numerators had to work for additional one day to compensate for the day. I think that one I've just said. Eh? These are the two recommendations, but I didn't want to mention them because the recommendations, recommendations should actually come from you people. Because you can see the lessons we have learned, the challenges we underwent, the advantages we saw. Therefore, I think these are our own feeling of recommendations, which I believe maybe you have better recommendations to put here. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, maybe uh, look and assist us to show care the type of data which we received after doing it, and our maybe household mappings. I did, yeah, so I did prepare some uh, slides with screenshots. I can show those. <clears throat> Again, we're having a demo session after this. Uh, Francis will be providing it, and he can run through the dashboard in real time. And I think we were going to use the NWA instance to show. I can just show you just quickly. Right, so this is the flow dashboard. And so this is the data. Oh, yeah. So you get a breakdown of how many surveys were collected in what county, uh, in terms of organization. So basically you get a breakdown of each question. I'm just going to run through this. We'll show this in a demo session after this as well for people. So this is the raw data report that's generated out of the system. That's another report. And these are the actual points of where data collected. You can see it's in the arid areas of Kenya. And then this was the data collected in Garissa. So you can see the satellite image where the Garissa town is and the river. And you can go basically all the way to a household level at the visual plots. So this was data collected by his enumerators. Yeah? You're most welcome. Thank you. Question and answers, please, after Jared has also done his bit. Thank you, Sam. From Food for the Hungry Kenya. Now, Sam has presented everything. I don't have anything to present. But anyway, who we are, we are a
call also Food for the Angry or FH Kenya, Christian Relief and Development Organization. We began our operations in Kenya since 1970s. Most of our programs are in the arid and semi-arid areas of Kenya, particularly Masabit, Isiolo, Moyale, and also some parts of Nairobi. Uh, what we believe in is to work with leaders, churches, in overcoming all forms of human poverty. That's how we empower the communities. So in this map of Kenya, the region shaded yellow shows most of the areas where we work. Masabit is the single biggest uh, county where most of our operations are located. The rest are in Meru, Isiolo, and also Nairobi. A part of the programming that we do in Kenya include HIV and AIDS, child development, which is basically education program, WASH, health and nutrition, and also pastoralist livelihood program. Uh, 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 Sam has actually given the background about how we partner with ACOVO, and in that we are in a consortium of four organizations, and also the fourth one is the Dutch partner. Actually, ACOVO is part of the Dutch partner. So in this large program of two years, we realized it was very important to develop an efficient way of project monitoring and also data collection. So the Dutch partner, through the support of ACOVLO, proposed that we can be able to use this component to collect the data and also monitor the project. So we used this as a tool to be able to check if we are on track, especially on our targets. And we do expect to continually learn and also develop some recommendations from this program that is funded by USID Kenya. So uh, looking at uh, how we have worked with this project, I've actually come along with my colleague all the way from Masabit, and uh, we won't leave here without at least him presenting. He's an M&D specialist, so he can also come and present the rest about ACOPO. ACPO team conducted three workshops to train partners on the use of <coughs> ACPO flow tool. Then also, we acquired the smartphones, and they were accompanied uh, with solar charges, which were bought by the partners. So we bought the smartphones, the ArcFlow, uh, ArcFlow, they were providing the, the technology. <coughs> uh, we also did uh, some field training uh, to our enumerators, and then after that, we did some pre-testing, and then we proceeded to the field for actual data collection. We employed this uh, arc for flow technology in conducting baseline survey for our WASH program, which is under Millennium Water Alliance. And the day we covered two counties, that is uh, Isiolo and Masabit. After data collection, the data was being sent to the to central point. That is the ArcFlow center. As for our experience with ArcFlow flow, I want to begin with the strengths. And one of the strengths that we noted is that uh, ArcFlow flow is able to give us data with, which is accurate, easier to gather, and share. So through this technology, we were able to ensure that the data that we were getting was very accurate. It cut a lot of costs, which we could have uh, incurred through when we were doing the data entry. Because the person who was collecting the data <coughs> was as well doing the data entry. And then it was being display, displayed on the, at the ARC4 floor center. Survey management was very easy. So the teams uh, which went to the field had only one uh, team leader. The other people who were leading the survey were in Nairobi. So that is unlike the way we uh, surveys are done because we need to have 
uh, some kind of a chain of command for the survey to be successful. But for this one, we were just a few people, uh, a few people uh, in Nairobi, the rest were on, uh, on the field. Then we also uh, have environmental conservation in that the, 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 the survey was uh, paperless. We didn't use uh, paper and also in terms of our energy, we were using solar. This technology enhances transparency and accountability. So you find as the enumerator collects that data, the system is able to show time, exact time when the data was collected, the GPS codes, and also take some photos, videos, and sound clips from the respondents or even the beneficiaries. This technology enhances transparency and accountability. So you find as the enumerator collects that data, the system is able to show time, exact time when the data was collected, the GPS codes, and also take some photos, videos, and sound clips from the respondents or even the beneficiaries. The system is also um, able to reduce the bulkness of data collection tools. So in the past, we surveys are normally done using questionnaires and they are kind of, uh, they are somehow bulk. Transmission of data was fast and efficient. So where there was network, the data collected was, uh, we were able to send the data immediately to the ARC4 flow center. The data cleaning was uh, very fast. And also you find on the analysis part, it was uh, faster because as the, 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 the graphs on the, uh, on the, for, for the visual display were, con were being continually updated as the data was streaming. Data collected by direct observation can be backed up for in form of photos, videos, sound clips for reference. The results were, being, uh, were made available in uh, real time and to larger audiences. How did that happen? You find uh, as we were collecting the data, it was being viewed all over. The system was able to show locations through geocodes and status of activities in real time in form of videos, sound clips, photos, and thus monitoring of the project was, uh, be, was, was being done by the managers while in office. So somehow it, 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 it that cut costs as well as uh, uh, improving the efficiency of the whole of the whole exercise. Diversity of data collected. We were able to ensure diversity of the data collected because we wanted both qualitative and quantitative data, and we were able to do that. ARC4 flow is one of the reliable, cheapest, and fastest ways of, to, uh, or rather, to answer question of how who, where, and when in monitoring and evaluation. Two challenges that we encountered. Future use by FH. So we are, because we, are, we noted the advantages of this uh, system, we are exploring the possibility of using ag flow in other programs, like nutrition department, to conduct our surveys. And that marks the end. Thank you. <laughs> and people who are able to use smartphones. As uh, I think we can all agree, it's not easy to use the, these uh, smartphones. So that was a kind of challenge. And given that literacy le levels are a bit down up there. So those were the two challenges that we encountered. Future use by FH. So we are, because we, are, we noted the advantages of this uh, system, we are exploring the possibility of using ag flow in other programs, like nutrition department, to conduct our surveys.
and that marks the end. Thank you.